If you're similar to me, and many of you are, the idea of milling your own lumber and using it in your woodworking projects is extremely appealing. Well, I recently got a Granberg chainsaw mill, and in this video I'll be doing a full assembly. I was recently offered a huge walnut tree that blew down in someone's backyard. A chainsaw mill is the exact thing that you need in this situation. These people did not want heavy equipment coming into their yard to handle this log, so the only other option was to cut it up into firewood. The chainsaw mill gives me the option to go into the yard, slab it, and carry the slabs out individually. The instructions that come with a mill are very easy to follow and make the whole process of assembling the mill very easy. Another great thing about Granberg mills is you can buy all of the parts individually if you ever break something or lose something, and most of the hardware can be bought at stores like Lowe's and Home Depot if you want some backups. Now that you know the what and the why, I'm going to show you the assembly of the mill. First I'll show you the instruction booklet each step, and then I'll follow that up with the assembly of each component. Assembly starts with the end brackets, which basically hold everything together. The end brackets attach to the thickness rails, they clamp onto the post, as well as holding the long handle that goes across the entire mill. All the components of the mill assemble very easily with the included Allen wrench and chainsaw wrench. When you get one of the smaller size mills, you're going to get one on off bar. This is used to help guide the mill on to the log as you're making your cut or your first cut rail system. The on off bar attaches to the thickness rails using a tie bar. On top of the first assembly, there's an additional handle that helps in maneuvering the mill. One tip that will greatly aid in assembling the mill is to not have all of your nuts and bolts tightened down all the way from the start. This will make the most difference when you're attaching the end brackets and on off bars to the thickness rails. The play in the parts by doing so will help you square up the mill when you're making your final adjustments. For attaching the end brackets and on off rails, you slide carriage bolts into the thickness rails, which are aluminum extrusions. You then place and fasten the assemblies on the bolts. When you get to the point where you want to start tightening things up, a large framing square is the perfect tool. With this part of the assembly, you're almost done completing the frame of the mill. The only thing you need to do now is slide the handle through the bosses on the end brackets as well as installing the post clamps. One of the final steps before assembling all the components into the completed mill is putting together the adjustment posts. This is very simple as it's just two bolts that hold each clamp together. The only difference between assembly of the nose end and thrust end adjustment posts is the nose end has a guard that goes around the bar. With the posts assembled, you can go ahead and put them into the clamps on the end brackets. Set them to 4 inches and tighten down the clamps. The basic mill is now assembled. The only thing you need to do is slip the plugs into the long handle and the adjustment post. Finish up by slipping the grip onto the short curved handle. Mounting your chainsaw to the mill is simple as sliding the bar between the clamps on the adjustment post. Center the pads on the clamps and tighten them down evenly. If you got a basic mill, from here you're ready to saw some slabs. I got one of the more complete kits that included an oiler. Here's how I installed the kit, including drilling holes in my bar for the oiler bolt. The oiler kit is an easy install. First pop the bracket into the nose-in adjustment post. Place the rubber pad on top of the bracket and set the tank on the pad. 
The hose clamps go around the indents in the tank and then you just tighten them up. Finish up the assembly by screwing on the white cap and slipping the clear hose over the valve. If you're using a double-ended bar you got from Granberg, it will already have holes for the oiler bolt. If you're using a bar that does not have a hole, you're going to need to drill that yourself. Measure, mark, and punch the center of the hole. I then use my drill press, turning the chuck by hand. Unless you have a very low speed setting on your drill press, you'll end up hardening the hole as you drill it and ruining your drill bit. Turning by hand keeps it at a very slow speed and avoids this problem. The purpose of the oiler kit is to add additional oil into longer bars. It's suggested that you add these kits to bars longer than 36 inches. By having the hole for the oiler bolt overlap the groove, oil seeps into that groove and is pulled down the length of the bar by the chain. This will keep everything moving smoothly, avoiding excess wear to the bar and chain. The final step I took before firing up the mill was to install a cheap Amazon hand winch. I also had the parts to configure this mill to work with a 72 inch double ended bar so this winch will come in handy acting as an extra helper. And now for taking the first cut, something I've been waiting years to do. You can make this cut using an aluminum ladder but I have the easy rails from Granberg as well. Once you've got the top of the log flat, adjust your mill to make your next cut. Then using the on off bar, guide the mill onto the flat log and make your first slab. I always knew chainsaw milling was going to be something I'd enjoy, but I had no idea just how much I would enjoy it. It's just one of those things that's just while you're doing it, it's cool. The results are cool. Thinking about it's cool. After you're done, you want to just get back to doing more of it. And yes, it is hard work, but the rewards are well worth it. I can't wait to share more of this with you in upcoming videos. Well, this is just the start to a lot of exciting videos that I'm going to be posting in the future. So if you're not already subscribed, please click the subscribe button after this video. Leave a thumbs up. And if you have any comments, questions, leave them below. You can also check the description as well for links to other videos and products that I use in this video. Thanks for watching.